All right, and here we are for the last part. Woo. Yeah, you can see I've uh, prepared a little bass for him, uh, very reduced, but uh, I want him to lift off uh, some kind of Victorian roof. Mm -hmm. um, he's just pinned in so we can have a good free uh, free room for painting. Yeah. Um, very I've, nice little base. Yeah, I've constructed this base. It's very minimal, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it uh, will look quite nice. It's just a piece of uh, plastic tube for mm -hmm. as a stand, and um, these two uh, elements, uh, one here on the top uh, part, is a fence, mm -hmm. and uh, these are uh, also from Model Railway, two different kits. Um, but it's quite nice because the detail is extremely fine and it suits quite nice um, the detail level of the miniature. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so what have you planned for the roof? Uh, I think I want to have a nice uh, variation of green and blue tones for the shingles. Okay. Um, we will not go for uh, like Classically in Germany, uh, shingles are more of a red terracotta tone. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, to match it also with the figure, and uh, I think it looks quite nice and steampunky to have some blue greenish ones. Yeah. And you got a little piece of fence up there. Yeah. That's is it from a, like a Bush model railway kit or what is that? Yeah, I think it's it's Bush. It's um, it's iron gates and fences ah, set. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I just. Uh, snapped out a little part of that and glued that on top. Mm -hmm. All right, so. All right, so uh, as you can see on the palette, I have a range of uh, interesting blue tones. Uh, a lot of the tones we've used uh, already previously on the model. So we have some um, dark sea blue, some turquoise, um, some cabalite green from the new Games Workshop colors, uh, tank brown, and a um, dark green from the uh, new game color air range um, which is quite nice because it's relatively thin and uh, especially on a black white foundation you can achieve quite nice effects with that and some black and white uh, i will start with the uh, green from the air range that i just mentioned and add a tiny bit of black And we'll just start picking out uh, single, single, single jingles. Single jingle. <laughs> well, that's already surprising to me. It's like uh, I would have probably um, made them just black first or something, or just the whole surface. But you're going shingle by shingle already. Yeah, I think it's quite nice to uh, first pick out uh, the different colors and then work with uh, some glazes and washes to oh, okay. get some shadows in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make sure um, that the uh, the placement of the uh, the colors look somewhat random and not uh, not create a pattern. Mm. But you can see quite nicely how the black and white still shines through. This is not only because the color is uh, 
diluted by me, but uh, because the uh, the color is thinner itself and somewhat clear, I guess because uh, because it's um, designed for the airbrush. Yeah. All right. I think that's uh, good for now with the with the greens. Um, the uh, next ones I will um, paint are the ones that I paint in dark sea blue. Um, also because I want the main appearance of the uh, roof to be more blue, mm -hmm. uh, single greens, uh, it's necessary to, to place them somewhat early to see how it looks. Yeah, make sure you also paint uh, the ones down there. If you just happen to look in there, they should be painted. Uh, for the next ones, we will uh, mix some of the dark sea blue with some turquoise to get a more bluish, bluish ones, but more saturated. Yeah, so far I think there's uh, no big secret to what you're doing there. No, I think one one thing that you sh you could mention though is that if you paint the uh, uh, each shingle, make sure you touch the sides of the shingle and the recesses, um, because so there's no white. Left yeah, yeah. If you're too careful and just try to hit just the shingle, um, mm. if there's white in the in the recesses, that could look. Quite irritating in the mm -hmm. end. Okay, and some of them want to have in a more like a oxidated copper tone. This is here the cabalite green. Okay, um, I mixed a bit of the previous color in there, um, so it's not that intense. A little too, too, too vivid, yeah. Um, once we uh, we start and add some of the uh, the brown tones, it will fade anyways. But mm. uh, still, we want don't want it to to be too dominant. All right, so you now have a more or less random, <laughs> actually a pretty random assortment of differently blue and green tiles. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so that was the plan, and uh, so far so good. So uh, we, you have to make sure um, before you continue with the next step that uh, this is entirely dry. It should be by now nearly dry on on all the, on the shingles, just to make sure uh, I will give them a quick blow with the blow dryer. Mm -hmm. In the next step I want to uh, get a little bit more uh, separation between the different layers and uh, I will do that with uh, with the brown tone with uh, tank brown and a little bit of black and once we add that color that will have quite a strong impact because it's uh, uh, quite a strong red blue contrast there. And um, I take a damp brush uh, with the color just in the tip, so I can place it here in the recess, and just with water from the back of the brush, pull it out already a bit, mm -hmm. and then just with a wet brush. And doing this row by row now, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see you have quite a uh, nice definition here. Whether here it's rather uh, it's a little too, too D. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'll just continue like that. Row by row. The nice thing about um, these um, plastic uh, shingles is actually I think they're supposed to, um, to to be some kind of wood shingles with uh, some, some nice texture in there. Mm -hmm. um, but that makes it quite easy to, to give, give them a nice detailed look just with a few glazes. Yeah. Yeah, glazes slash wash really, isn't it? Yeah. As you see, you don't have to be scientific about this. Make sure that uh, you clean the brush and kind of smooth it uh, to the lower side of each row. You can also see how uh, Ben then actually pushes, uh, when, when he does the, the clean brush part, pushes the pigments back into the, into the um, shadows. Now, of course, you can create a little roof, tiling roof like this yourself, but uh, sometimes in uh, railroad um, parts or um, architectural parts, you can find these kind of things as well. And uh, it's much faster. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's quite nice also uh, to use, um, like, not really miniature, or the miniatures that we all paint, uh, miniature-related uh, stuff, but mm. uh, stuff from... Uh, like like model railroad stuff because it's very fine and you don't see it that often. Yeah. So um, it's also nice because it's got a fresh look to it. Yeah. Okay. You can um, see a much stronger separation of the individual tiles now uh, on the right side compared to the yeah. left side. You see a little bit of a transition in each of the rows, and uh, I guess you'll do the same on the other side now. Yes. All right. We'll be back uh, after that. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. You see something else. You've uh, actually created a, quite a bit of a transition from light to a little darker on the left side. Um, yep. Um, but that is also, I mean, uh, I enhanced the transition, but it's also due to the uh, foundation. It was a little darker ah. uh, down here because I actually spray painted the cube again with black after I did the black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, I have a stronger transition in there. Mm -hmm. But I think it's quite nice how uh, now single ones uh, stand out a little bit more. Um, that make them look somehow more more glossy in the in the surface and yeah. also like quite like the play in color. All right, all right. So uh, in the next step, we will um, add some highlights. We will try to uh, focus our highlights in that area where the figure will be positioned later on. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just get the figure. That's something you do quite a lot on your on your works is um, kind of giving a little spotlight to where the miniature is positioned to kind of draw the eye even closer. Yeah. And But yeah, you can see the colors work really nice, yeah. uh, nice together. All right. Mm, we will um, do the um, the highlights with a loaded brush, and we will try to um, highlight always this edge here as if the light would come from here, as we painted the light direction also on the miniature. So the light would come from here, and just to increase the um, three dimensional look, we'll also highlight the lower edge here. Mm hmm. Mm. One important thing is now that we pick the somewhat the similar colors um, that we use for the different shingles. So we will start with uh, a green, for example, and highlight all the green ones. So I'll load the brush with the green that I've used for the base color, some white on the tip, and try to place it here on the edge uh, to feather it out with the green. I have in my bit of the brush. Yeah. So again, this is one of those exercises where you just need to try to find the right amount of white in the tip. Yeah. But as uh, here the recesses are quite deep, you can also use the side of the brush, which makes it easier to to adjust the uh, level of white that you actually apply on the surface. Mm.
make sure that the green in the back of the brush is thinner than than the white the highlight color on the tip Now for the uh, Kablad green and blue one. Of course, I was waiting for that moment. You just uh, saw it. So if you go back 10 seconds, the uh, how Ben flipped the brush because um, he's got the white obviously on the tip and if you paint with one side of the tip then the white will be gone on one side and so that'll be there on the other side and he just turned that around and uh, used that. Another thing uh, you can see and uh, try to point it out again with the next time maybe is that um, first Ben places the white highlight just with a really with a tip and then when he's happy with it he kind of pushes a little bit down on the brush so that the um, backside color also flows. And this creates these automatic little transitions there. It's actually quite fun to just uh, use a bit of uh, base coated plastic card or something to try a little bit with the with the low brush technique just to play with it a little bit practice a little bit yeah also like structured plastic card like this year is quite nice um, because then you have like uh, real real borders where you can try to highlight around the corner and do round blendings and stuff and try mm. that uh, it's a bit hard to, to actually try and practice that on a really a flat piece of, of plastic mm -hmm. But yeah, I quite like the, um, the, the look of the uh, surface now and I will continue placing some lights on those here. Mm -hmm. As I said, you'll keep it around the miniature and not going to go all over the roof for that. Yeah. And just uh, to make that clear again, the back color and the brush is always the one of the tile that Ben is currently working with. It's, I don't think it's uh, going to be a big problem if it's a little dirty. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives a little, even more variation in the individual tiles. But generally, you don't want to use a like a dark sea blue on the light green ones and stuff. Yeah. And you just saw something else like there was a little too white, too much white on that brush for that really small tile there, and then just wiped it off on his hand and continued without the white. So little things like that, that um, loaded brush sounds very simple. It is very simple in, in a way, but uh, there's uh, little, little tricks and movements that uh, make it actually work all the time, <laughs> which helps. And it's actually nice if you watch a video just once for the first impression and then second time maybe really try to pick out some movements and these kind of things. I think actually the the video is quite a, the ideal way to see how the loaded brush works because you're even closer than than I am in in real life to yeah. and you can observe what what I do with the brush. Yeah, and you don't really think about it, do you? It's not like oh now I have to turn the brush. It's just almost uh, second nature, isn't it? Yeah, kind of muscle memory. Yeah, and that's one of as I said one of the nice things. Uh, not only that. Uh, on the screen, of course, you're much closer, but something to, to demonstrate something like this on a workshop um, is um, almost difficult because it, depending on how many people are there, um, not everybody will be able to see it this close. Yeah, and you have to do it with individual small groups to, to come to, to the front and actually see what you're doing. Yeah. Here you can also just rewind the, the video and Okay, here I'm not really blending, I'm just adding tiny lights. So I want to bring up the color of, of the whole shingle. Mm -hmm. Of 
But yeah, it's it's quite amazing. I mean, of course, there's a lot of little tiles, and it's just a, it's just a little time consuming. But there's really nothing on this roof that is difficult or um, that you won't be able to do. It's like, of course, the loaded brush needs a little practicing. If you really mess it up, just cover it again, no problem. But um, it's quite interesting to see how from that really almost flat initial 2D version, we've now arrived at a nice little 3D version with a great light in there, a great transition from top to bottom. Yeah, and you get a nice feeling for the material. I think that's also one important thing if you do bases. You have to make sure that you catch the right material for that you need for the for the atmosphere that mm. you want to create. Okay. Nice and easy. Yep. Um, all right, for the uh, little cast metal fence that we have here on the on the top. Mm -hmm. um, we will also go for uh, something quite uh, simple. When I did the um, desaturated brown wash on the on the uh, shadows here, I also just covered that. Mm, so it's a now um, dark quite brown. quite a dark brown. Mm -hmm. um, but we will just work with uh, some blue on top, um, dark sea blue as a dark steel tone, and. Just from the beginning, already some uh, loaded brush with some white in the tip. Because it's quite small, we will just dot in the highlights. And let's move here these round elements. Now with the well, the the back of the tip, I will already cre create a small transition. Mm. But yeah, it's more uh, dotting than actually doing doing a blending or something like that. Which, by the way, is a very easy and effective way of creating transitions. Can I have to turn it to get a better? direction for the pull of the brush because I need some long highlights that run around run along the tubes here. I need the upper part to be quite rusty in the end so I don't have to uh, get rid of the brown and all the recesses, I will just keep that. And here's another little thing again, if you go back maybe 15 seconds or so, um, just watch closely when does Ben paint with the tip and when does he move to the side of the brush? Sometimes if he wants Place to... the tip yeah. and then the with the back pull it with the side. It's, again, this, uh, if you just watch it without really, without really um, focusing on these little things, um, then you think, oh yeah, it looks great. And then you try it on your, on your own and everything turns white because uh, you've only painted with the tip. And now you see the difference in appearance here already. Um, it's quite amazing and it's super simple actually. Yeah. Okay, I will just try to push the highlight here on this side. Okay, and we'll do a little bit off white because this here is a bit too dominant for my taste. To soft that out here a little to the side. Right, and then, because um, I want that to be rusty, as I said, um, we will take some orange brown. Just because I have it at hand, I will take some uh, vermin brown from the old games workshop range. Something like Kalahari orange from scale uh, could work nice as well. Mm. 
and it's quite diluted. Um, let me show that on my finger. No. Yeah. Actually, the scale for, the scale colors could be really cool for rust, anyways, as uh, rust usually has a very kind of dry, uh, powdery surface. Yeah. And uh, of course, the madness of those colors help a lot. So I'm just washing the. Uh, or actually, it's a quite a con controlled wash because I'm just placing it here and let it gather in the recesses. And as there are more pigments in the that will dry it directly in the recess, the orange will look more intense in there. Mm. We'll also put some here in the. The recess of on some single channels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course the the rust will wash out and wash down a little bit, and that's almost no miniature painter that doesn't really love rust <laughs> and that doesn't take pictures of rust on vacation. And <laughs> yeah, you can see here on the uh, transition of the the upper part, uh, there's a little. Um, uh, grain. Um, mm. That is because I just added some uh, baking soda on some parts here mm -hmm. uh, to have some kind of moss or just some kind of texture detail that does not look too much like plastic. Right. Okay. I'll blow dry that. Be careful to uh, not to set your blow dryer on uh, mm -hmm. really strong heat because that would melt the uh, filigree fans. Yeah. I just highlight the upper part here of the green because I have the these strong highlights here on the top, mm. and that, that just does not too look too muted. Yeah. Okay, so green and a bit of the white. Mix it already on the on the palette. Uh, put the white as a foundation first and then the green on top a little thinner yeah uh, and then the white makes sure that it actually pops out a little bit okay I just think I will just get rid of that too dominant highlight there just get it down a bit make it smaller you yeah, don't want to lose it completely but uh, yeah shouldn't be yeah too. like that yeah very pretty. All right, so let's put the figure in place and see how everything looks. But for me, this looks already pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, if you if you think about it, like a little more than half an hour, um, of course, with a lot of explanation and talking and stuff. Um, but that's uh, a very achievable result, and uh, I think everybody can agree that this is not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think rocketeer it's rocketeer science. <laughs> I think it's uh, quite amazing with uh, that you just with the uh, with a few pieces of plastic card and half an hour of paint you can get a nice base. Ah, oh, nice, nice, nice. Here we go back. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, that looks really, really cool. Yeah, and you can see it works really nice with also the highlight on the on the uh, on the boot. Mm. And um, the highlights on the on the shingles. I really like I, I really like the the kind of minimized base there as well. I mean, uh, for us the inspiration was something that uh, Peter Tote did as a uh, gift miniature in my display cabinet. That's uh, where it came from. But I think the first one that I actually saw that do this was uh, Julian Cassez, I believe, when he did his uh, tutorial on stones. He did something similar, I believe, and uh, it's really nice. Um, it's something different as well. You don't see this all the time. Well, probably now we will, but <laughs> um, try it. It's, uh, it looks really cool also in the display case. Yeah, and also it's it's always good to to think about how to reduce the size of uh, of your project and still uh, give it a very dense atmosphere. Yeah. So here you can see the it's quite clear where where that is. It's the the rooftop of the tall house, and it's uh, you can get a very nice scene uh, with just a little work and you could just focus on small details here also at for, uh, for example moss or pigeons or something like that also more storytelling elements mm -hmm. um, and it supports the miniature and obviously this is a miniature that has a jump pack 
Um, yeah. That means it uh, doesn't necessarily have to stay on the ground. Uh, and it's the same if you do a, a space marine with jump, with jump pack or a, a, an orc boy or something, then you can maybe do like a rusted part on the bottom as a base. Um, but uh, you can be very creative uh, and actually even avoid a lot of work by doing this. Yeah. And really, um, I think, yeah, it's, it's always good to try so to do something special with the bases uh, that give you that gives you really the opportunity to give the figure some kind of background, not only a visual background but also a storytelling background. Mm. So um, yeah, also with that figure, it's really nice with the angle that you have the foot in. You can just by just tilting the miniature a bit or turning it, you know, you could give it a really dynamic mode. Mm -hmm. How he jumps off that roof. Okay. All right. We'll so him in place yeah. and find uh, a nice position, and then uh, then it's done. Yay! All right. And there he is in all his glory. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Um, really nice. Just about to jump off that roof. Um, I think the minimalistic base really supports the dynamic approach of the figure. Yeah. And uh, I think especially this kind of tilted roof because of the position of his feet. Um, you almost have to have something tilted and if you look at this his heel actually it's slightly in the air that is even more dynamic yeah yeah, yeah he's really just pinned in the tip of the the shoe yeah and all, now all we hope is that his jetpack isn't empty <laughs> 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 yeah but it's it's amazing i mean uh, this miniature of course um, if you look at the the whole assortment of of awesome new miniatures from infamy is uh, one of the ones that is uh, very detailed. Uh, it's very yeah. filigree. Um, we've seen this on the armor. Uh, we've seen this on the on the jetpack, for example. Um, I know on screen this looks really big. Uh, I'm actually, honestly, guys, I'm, I'm very, very uh, impressed by looking at it in real life because it's really small. <laughs> and to make it actually look this this good on camera, uh, I can only say hats off, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Comets. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, I really hope also you, you guys enjoyed uh, uh, following the uh, details step by step here. Mm -hmm. Also with the non-metal, I got a lot of questions about uh, how I do my different non-metals. And I think here it's quite nice because you have various tones. You, you have a lot of contrast going on, a lot of mm. different kind of uh, metal regarding the uh, the uh, size of the surface. Yeah. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Yep, I did. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, see you next time. See you. Bye-bye.